Rubber baby buggy bumper. Rubber baby buggy bumper. Toy boat. Toy boat. Toy boat. <coughs> <coughs> meow. 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 You're a star. People like you. Mother will be proud. You got this. Go, go, go. Oh. oh. Do I have anything on my teeth? I don't remember eating spinach. I hate spinach. How's the hair? Is it perfect? Because it has to be perfect. I am my hair. Okay, let's do this. Wait. What was that, cat? We're live? Why didn't you... Okay, well then. Hello there, I am Ian McWorthy, and this is WWW, the World Wide Window, the only program on the web brave enough to pull back the blinds and look into the world's most pressing issues. Our topic today, felines and fame. These cats have become internet sensations overnight. And we have some of the most famous internet felines here with us today. 
We begin tonight with a cat who has set the internet ablaze with his wild and crazy antics. Please welcome Tuffy, a.k.a. Cat in a Box. Thanks for joining us, Tuffy. Thanks for having me, Ian. Now, Tuffy, you've been on the scene for a few years now, and delighting audiences, internet-wide, with your box-related adventures. Can you tell us how it started for you? To be honest, it was, it's an old story of a box, a camera, and a curious cat. Mike and Cheryl, Mike and Cheryl just purchased this juicer, a, a really loud machine. machine. Really, it's really frightening. But they left the box on the ground, and I was, and Cheryl was filming herself looking for a blog for, for her and stuff. And I was just hanging out on the kitchen. I was just hanging out on the kitchen table when I noticed this box. It was new. The colors were really cool. And I leaned closer to see to get a better view. Thought it would be a good idea to scratch it some. So I reached out. I fell in and it, the rest is just history. What was it like being in that box for the first time? I'm not going to lie. It was really scary. One time, one minute, I'm sitting on the table. The next minute, I'm in darkness. Like, I was like, I was really confused. I was like, wait, where am I? Where'd show go? I moved around. The box is over, and I saw light again. I went out, and there I was. In the kitchen. After that first video went up online, what was the response? It was slow at first, but we didn't really expect anything to come from it. Then Cat B picked it up and it just flew. It just blew up. It just blew up. The email came pouring in, the, the views skyrocketed. Asians calling. It was like a real win. But we just took it and tried. Has fame changed you? No, I'm still I'm still saying stuff you have always been. What about your people? How have they responded to the attention? Oh, they're great. I couldn't have become who I am today without them. We live in the same house. I still have the same cracking photos I've always had. And yes, I eat a few more treats than I used to. Mike and Cheryl go on a few more vacations, but we're still the same family. I have a really tough question for you now. Yeah. What's your favorite type of box? Oh, um, that, that's actually really tough. Um, I do genuinely love boxes with pictures and colors in them. But I have to say, the best boxing experience I've, ever, I've had is this brown box with black littering. And sure, it looks pretty boring on the outside, but when you get in there, wow. My personal favorite is the one fall off a bookshelf into a large box with some of my exercise equipment. Can you tell us about that experience? At first, I was like, wait, where am I? Where's Mike? And then I took a step back and bumped my hand into the wall. It was soft. And then I, I was like, oh, I'm probably in a box again. <laughs> so I settled down. I decided to do a little, a little scratching. I And I took my nose and dug them, dug them into the box wall. And the sound, oh, that sound, it was like, a concert hall. The box was big and the sound was, my, my scratching was really beautiful. And it's one of your biggest hits, correct? Yep, 50 views as of last week. That's amazing. I'm really proud of that piece. Now, some critics have said that your last few videos have been uninspired, maybe even staged. How do you respond? Look, I love boxes, okay, and I would never intentionally fall into a box. I'm curious, I'm adventurous, 
I just, it's just who I am, and I fall into boxes because it's like, because I've lost my balance, and when I fall into, wait, if I fall into boxes, it's because I've lost my balance, and not, not because I'm trying to put a show or whatever. Some of your peers have admitted to intentional falls. Just last week, Midge the Wonder Cat admitted to past intentional falls. I know Midge. She's a good cat. But we don't make mistakes, Sam. She owned up to them. What advice do you have for younger cats who are falling into boxes? There are some great boxers out there. Tink and the Tabby's doing some great stuff with garbage cans. He's fallen from high tab would never have thought possible. And for all the cats out there, I just say, keep falling because you never know where you might land. That's great advice. I know. And for your viewers, don't forget to visit TuffyTheCat.com and purchase all your key phone gear. We've got hats, shirts, pillowcases, underwear, wristbands, and boxes. Well, thank you for joining us, Tuffy. My pleasure. Well, I better get that. That could be a um, that could be a package. Hello. Wonderful stuff. Ian, I can hear you, but I can't see you. Hello, where, where am I? Our next guest has made a name for herself with her unusual resting places. Please, I'm honored to welcome Sandy, the Sleepy Cat. Thank you for joining us, Sandy. Sure. Thanks for having me. You look tired. Did you get enough sleep? I could never get enough sleep. Sleep is my favorite. How much sleep do you normally get in a day? I've been told the average cat sleeps 13 to 16 hours a day, but I prefer around 20. It's a nice round number. And you've made somewhat of an art of where you sleep. Can you tell us a bit about that? Most cats, they like to lounge on the backs of couches or maybe on a cat bed. Some of them nap in window fields, and that's all fine. But the way I see it, pretty much anything is a bed if you sleep on it. What are your, some of your, what are some of your favorite resting places? I love a pile of coats. For most people, Sam and Dana have parties. All of their guests will pile their coats on a bed, and I love to dive in and sleep. But parties are rare. On a normal day, I'll sleep on the printer. Sam has a pair of boots. I'll stick my head in one and just doze off for a while. At night, I like to sleep on Dana's head. Those are just some of my usual resting places. But it's the more unusual sleeping spaces that you become famous for, correct? Uh, okay. It looks like she's falling asleep on us. Sorry, did I fall asleep? Yes. I was asking what some of the more unusual places you found yourself sleeping. Oh, well, I've been found sleeping in the dryer. I've slept on plants. I've slept on tall stacks of books. I've slept on cars and bikes and lamps. I slept on a little kid once. Was the child also sleeping? I don't know. I was asleep. I remember he was quite uncomfortable though. Recently, you've engaged in some more risky sleeping practices. Can you tell us about that? It's called stunt sleeping. It's, uh, well, it's what the people want. It used to be audiences would be happy if I fell asleep with my head in the paper bag and my body sticking out. But nowadays, they want to see more 
action-packed sleeping. Sam recently bought a remote control car. I fell asleep on it one day, and he started driving it around with me on it. The people loved it. Unfortunately, I fell off and bent a few whiskers, but that's just the world we live in. I sleep on the vacuum cleaner with Dana pushing it around. It's sleep, so I love it. But if I fall off, I'm putting my heart at risk. You tell a funny story. I once fell asleep in a... And she's fallen asleep on us again. Great. And I wrapped it, cat! Ah! What was that? I have no idea. That's never happened before. Cat, can you figure out what happened and maybe not let it happen again? Did you just call me Cat? Sorry, no. My program manager is named Cat. It's actually kind of funny that. And you're asleep again. Cat, maybe we should move on. What's that? We're on again. Why didn't you tell me? And the hair? No, my hair, not, not your hair. Why would I care about your hair? Fine, just... Welcome back. Let's get right to our next guest. I'm very pleased to welcome Boo Boo, the singing cat. Kitty Boo Boo, it's a real honor to have you here. I'm a big fan. Your Meow Mix remix is one of my favorite songs of all time. Thanks, Ian. Much love. And I see you brought a few friends. These are Boo Boo's babies. Meow, meow. I see. Well now, Boo Boo, you've toured the world with the likes of Lady Gaga, Rihanna, and Barbara Streisand. And your videos have millions and millions of views. And just last year, you rang in the new year with Ryan Seacrest. Where did your journey begin? Just a few years ago, Boo Boo was just a young king with a dream. But because of Boo Boo's hard work and some auto-tune software, Boo Boo has finally achieved the level of success that she's always deserved. And this is just the beginning. Meow. 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 Now, I don't mean to get too personal, but there's a rumor that your hit single, Scratching Post, is braced on your brief relationship with John Mayer's cat, Bro. Care to comment on this? Boo has no comment about that. <laughs> oh. If I'm not mistaken, it was not long after your breakup with Bro that you got into a little trouble where you caused some damage at the Beverly Hills Hilton. Boo Boo allegedly caused some damage. Nothing was ever proven. Those scratch marks could have been from any cat. And besides, Boo Boo is much more mature now. Boo Boo realizes that there's more to life than stupid, attractive guitar playing cats that break your heart. Anyway, all of that is behind Boo Boo now. Oh, oh. Well, that's great to hear. And speaking of things that are great to hear, how about you sing us a song? My girlfriend is watching, and I know she'd just love it if you sang Let Your Claws Out. Actually, Ian, Boo Boo would much rather take this time to talk about a new foundation I've created. It's called Kitty Clothes. That's clothes with a K. Meow, meow. Can you please tell them to stop doing that? Did you know that 99.9% of all kittens don't have any clothes to wear? Well, doesn't that sort of make sense since they do not need Kitty clothes? Kitty clothes are dedicated to providing clothes to all the needy kittens in the world. But cats have fur. They don't necessarily need them. You have skin, but you still wear clothes. Well, yes, but... So why should all of the 
The mannequins of the world go without dresses and cool hats and designer jeans. It's just sad. So Billow has dedicated her life to ending King Clothlessness. But you do understand that it's not normal for kittens to wear clothes. It's that type of thinking that's keeping the kittens of the world naked. But you don't... Never mind. Good luck with kitty clothes. Thanks, Ian. And your viewers can help out by donating at kittyclothes.com. That's great. Well, how about that song? We will have a hairball situation, <clears throat> so... <clears throat> but I thought I was going to get to hear a... <clears throat> <Sorry. clears throat> Sorry. Bubba would like to... <clears throat> Thank you for... <clears throat> okay, I think we're ready for our next guest. <clears throat> oh, that's a big one. Our next guest is a cat that is famous for her wicked sense of irony. Please welcome Skinny Jean, the sarcastic cat. It's a pleasure to have you here, Skinny Jean. I'm so honored to be here. Tell me, is it Skinny Jean or just Skinny or just Jean? Whatever. What about S.J.? No. Okay, Skinny. How about you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm a cat. Is, is that it? That's a little bit about me. Isn't that what you wanted? Okay, well, um, how about you tell me how you stand out amongst the multitudes of felines on the internet today? I guess it's just my winning personality. Okay, moving on. One of your more recent videos was a review of a Kevin James film in which you said that he was the greatest actor in our world, or any world. He's so talented that his talent almost hurts to watch. His, it's like looking at the sun through a magnifying glass. Pretty harsh words coming from you. Is this how you really feel about Mr. Mr. James? Love him. Ha <laughs> ha. Classic skinny. I love it. Seriously. Love him. Right, but you're being sarcastic, so you don't love him. No. Wait, I'm... Are you being sarcastic or not? I don't know. How can you not know how you feel? Maybe I spend so much time being sarcastic because it's my gimmick that I can't even tell how I feel anymore. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, it is. I, again, can't tell whether you're being sarcastic or not. However, will you be able to go through your life wondering whether or not I'm being sarcastic? I don't know how to answer that. Whatever. Well, how about we talk about your soon-to-be-released book? Oh, great! Do you not want to talk about it? No. Love to. I'm just going to go ahead and assume that you mean that. It's a review. It's a book. What is it? It's a book that is has a title playing off of your classic catchphrase. It's titled, Oh Great, Another Cat Book. How does it feel to not only be an internet sensation, but also a published author? It's great. 
I'm so excited people will be spending their money on a book of a sarcastic cat reviewing their culture. <laughs> Instead of Dickens, Shakespeare, Morrison, or even Austin, I'm so lucky. That's great. Well, I don't think I have anything else to say, so... Interrupting cat! Woohoo! <laughs> oh, great. Another device to distract the audience when things get a little too awkward. I'm not a device. <laughs> Whatever. Can you take care of this, please? I'm sorry about that. I'm so offended. I might just get up and leave. <laughs> oh, that's... Oh, I, I guess she meant it that time. Well, I think it's a good time to shoot over to our tr correspondent, Teresa Blaze, and see what she's up to. Teresa? It's great to have you here with us, Muffin. It's great to me. Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear anything. I thought I heard... A blender. I can assure you I heard no such thing. Okay. Good. But since you bring it up, wasn't it a blender that started your whole career? Yes, well, I was a kitchen cat, you know? I loved hanging out in the kitchen. It got the most sun. It smelled great. I loved hanging out there. But one day, my people, Charlotte and Carol, they, uh, they decided they wanted to be healthy. So they bought a, a blender to make smoothies. I was taking my morning nap on the counter, and all of a sudden... Take your time. Thank you. Well, the sound, it startled me. So I jumped up and went flying off the counter. I landed on my legs and went running off. The next time it happened, they cut it on film. And now here I am. And how has your life changed since this first video? Ever since the first video became a hit, people have wanted more scares. I've been scared by vacuum cleaners, televisions... They recently installed a really loud doorbell, and Carol is a trumpet player, so it's, uh, I don't sleep much. What was that? I didn't hear anything. I thought, I mean, I, I swear, I mean, I thought I heard. Uh... Nope, you're safe. Okay, good. You're one of the most popular cats on the internet, with legions of fans all around the world. What's your relationship with your fans? It's great. I really love my fans. They're very supportive. Sometimes too supportive. Love roaming around the neighborhood or going outside to lounge in the backyard. But lately, people have been uh, jumping out of bushes and cars and trees. It's a little stressful, but it's the price of fame, right? And you've been scared by an illustrious group of people. Isn't that right? I've been scared by Jay-Z, Beyonce, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the cast of Stranger Things, the Pope, LeBron James, Cher. She's the best, by the way. She really is. And your fame has taken you all around the world? That's right. I'm big in Bulgaria. And just last week, I went to London to be scared by Kate Middleton. How's that? Terrifying. For some reason, that accent. I can assure you, everything's fine. Okay, good. Of course. <laughs> okay, what a great scare. 
Help me. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's just Carol. We put her up to it. Hilarious, Carol. What a remarkable young cat. Some of the most famous felines have delighted the internet with their wild antics, unusual habits, or winning personalities. However, this cat, cat has risen to fame despite not having a very sunny disposition. Everyone, give a hand for Nelson, the grouchy cat. Nelson, thank you for inviting all of us into your home. I didn't invite you. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Yes. Excellent. Let's get right down to it. Do you have an issue with anger? No. But you're known all over the world for your signature. No. Next question. In fact, no. No more questions. Why are you even doing this? Fascinating. What do you think is the cause of your anger? A traumatic kittenhood? Or possibly a broken heart? My kittenhood was great. And I am in a committed and loving relationship. I have had then a wonderful does, life. Then where does that signature rage come from? <sighs> it's because of my face. Your face? I look like I'm frowning. No matter what I do, I frown. So, people think I'm angry. But I'm not. I'm really not. Like right now. Right now, I'm smiling. <laughs> That's not a smile. It is a smile. It's my smile. But it doesn't matter, because people see what they want to see. Have you always been grouchy? No! I'm happy! Or at least, I was. But everyone insisted that I was angry because of my face. And then I became famous as this angry, grouchy cat. So I felt a lot of pressure to live up to the reputation. But the problem is... After a while of pretending to be angry, you really do end up feeling angry. So now I am angry. I'm an angry, grouchy cat, and I want to be left alone. And also, I don't have thumbs, which makes me really angry, because my people always leave the TV on whenever they leave the house. But they always leave it on TLC, and I hate TLC. And I can't pick up the remote to change the channel because I don't have thumbs. So that makes me really angry. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh, I thought you were smiling. No. Now I'm frowning. So you really are angry? Well, now I am, yes. But didn't you just say you weren't? I wasn't before, but people thought I was. So I pretended to be, but now I really am. <laughs> I'm confused. That doesn't surprise me. Maybe they should maybe they should call you Nelson. The confusing cat. Well maybe they should call you Furball. And now a word from our sponsors. Aren't you sick and tired of boring drab kitty litter? Don't you think you deserve a little a kitty litter with a little bit more personality? Aren't you embarrassed by that ugly, sad litter filling up your box? You said yes, or even shrugged any of these questions. I think it's time for you to get Litter Glitter. Litter Glitter is guaranteed to liven up any old box of litter. Litter Glitter is guaranteed to add excitement to any litter box. But that's not all. If you order now, you'll also receive Celebrity Scratchers. With Celebrity Scratchers, you can add glamour to any scratching post. Don't wait. Pick up your phone and order now. I said, pick up your phone and order now. Litter Glitter and Celebrity Scratchers. Only $9.99. Call the number on your screen now. Hi, I'd like to order Litter Glitter and Celebrity Scratchers, my credit card. I don't have one. Hold on. Can I have your credit card?
Okay, I'm back. Can I get 200 orders? Hold on, I'm on the phone. Better make that 500. Cats are often thought of as wise and noble creatures, which is one of the reasons why more and more people are going online to seek the advice of cats. That and people have a lot of free time on their hands. Two of the internet's most famous advice experts are Edna and Estelle, the grandma cats. Let's give them a hand. Edna, Estelle, it's great to have you here. Thank you for coming. Is this on? Are we on? Edna, are you there? Hello? Oh, we here? Hello, and yes, you're both live. I'm glad to still be alive, but who knows for how much longer. Yeah, Miss Interviewer Lady, we don't have a lot of time, so hurry up with your questions, sweetheart. Okay, then. To begin, how did you two meet? We grew up in the same neighborhood. Both strays. I had a home. You had a back porch with a sauce of milk. That's hardly a home. It was enough. In those days, all you needed was a sauce of milk and good company. Am I right? You said it, sister. Today, these kittens, they need their fancy forts to climb on, scratching posts, fluffy beds. And catnip. Oh, don't get me started on catnip. Us? We had some milk. We had some laughs. We had each other. And how did you two become advice experts? It started in the neighborhood. Where else? We used to hang out on this stoop. Cats would come by. They'd say, Edna, I've been having a problem with hairballs. What should I do? I'd say, tuna. That's right. Drink the juice, leave the tuna. It's the acids. Breaks down hairballs. Pretty soon, cats all over the world came our way with questions. Then, we got hooked up with this lady. Rosemary. She took us in, gave us a place to stay. The cats kept coming around, asking for our help. Rosemary says, I should put you up on the computer. So she gets her grandson to come over and film us. The rest is history. And you quickly become some of the most famous cats on the internet. Has fame changed you at all? Fame shame. Who cares? We got milk. We got tuna. We got chairs with some sun. We're out of the cold. That's all we need. Well, that and our TV. With surround sound. And DVR. So we can record our stories. But other than that, no. Fame hasn't changed us. That's wonderful. So... We asked, our, we asked our audience to write some questions down for you, and we're going to see if you can answer them. Our first one's from Jessica. Jessica writes, My boyfriend's idea of a date is going to his friend's house and watching stupid action movies. How do I get him to take me on a real date? Jessica, I've got one word for you. Tuna. Here's what you do. The next time your boyfriend makes you go to his friend's house, you're gonna take that can of tuna and you're gonna open it. You're gonna hide it somewhere real good, wherever they hang out. Pretty soon, that tuna is gonna start to stink something awful. Your boyfriend's gonna wanna leave. Then you make him take you out on a real date. Okay, our next question comes from John. John asks, my, my boss is driving me crazy. His, he keeps sneaking up behind me and looking over my shoulder to make sure I'm working. It's making me paranoid. What should I do? Well, that's an easy one, John. I have two words for you. Kitty litter. Take some kitty litter, sprinkle a generous amount behind your chair in your office. When your boss tries to sneak up behind you, you hear his footsteps in the kitty litter. <laughs> wow, you two are amazing. Oh, stop it. You're too kind. Is everything all right? That was just our driver. He was reminding me about the jet. The jet? We chartered a private jet. We'll go to Paris for a few days. Then maybe a couple of days in the French Riviera? 
You've been so nice, but Estelle, we really do have to be going. Rolls Royce are nice cars, but they're not necessarily fast. You own a Rolls Royce. We own four. And a Hummer. Anyways, you've been a doll. The next time we're in the neighborhood, we'll be sure to stop by. And if you ever need any advice. If you're on email, I'll send you our manager's information. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm really glad to see fame hasn't changed you. Oh, aren't you sweet? Well, au revoir. Bye-bye now. Well then, let's move on. Our next guest is a cat that some believe has very special powers. Please welcome Gilda, the psychic cat. It's a pleasure to have you here, Gilda. It's quite an honor to be invited here, darling. Now then, tell me. Wait! I'm sensing that you will want to ask me questions. Yes? Well, this is an interview, so that's a good guess. I can assure you, darling, I was not guessing. Okay. Well, how about you tell me what my first question is going to be, then? You will want to know when I first noticed my abilities. That's actually correct. Well then, Gilda, when did you first notice your abilities? It was an autumn day, crisp and cool. I was but a wee kitten, sunning on a windowsill, not a care in the world. Then suddenly, I felt a chill run up my spine, and I saw a vision of snowflakes. Sure enough, that very evening, the first snow of the year came, and I knew that I was special. And you're sure it wasn't just an educated guess? I am a cat. I have had no education. Thus, it could not have been an educated guess. Okay, well, some of your critics have suggested that your predictions are often very vague. I predict that those critics will someday die. Well, everybody dies, but whatever. Last year, you predicted that a sports team with an animal name would win a championship. And I was correct. Yeah, but there are so many sports teams with animal names and so many sports and so many championships that you were bound to be correct. Thank you. That wasn't a compliment. You're welcome. Now you're just being confusing. Sometimes my powers are difficult to explain. You're not making any sense. Let's just move on. I'm sensing that you would like to move on. I just said that. So did I. Okay, well, how about I ask some questions and you use your powers to figure out the answers. Proceed. What's my middle name? I'm sensing the letter J. 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 Jello. No, not Jello. J. J. Jeffrey. No, I have it. It's Jebediah. No, it's Roger. Of course it is. But your mother wanted it to be Jebediah. It was your father who chose Roger. Sometimes I see clearer visions from the mother's side. <clears throat> you can't possibly prove that that's correct. But it is. I'm psychic, remember, darling? Okay, next question. I'm thinking number between zero and ten. What is it? Eleven. Well, first of all, that is not a number between zero and ten. And you're wrong. I was thinking of one. Well, eleven is just two ones. Sometimes when the vision is very powerful, I see doubles. That's going to be an answer. Okay, one final question. Yes. Excuse me? Yes is the answer to your final question. 
But I haven't asked the question yet. Nevertheless, the answer is yes. But you haven't heard the question. But I know it. Fine, then can you tell me what my final question is? Can you tell me what my final question is? Now you're just repeating me. Can you tell me what my final question is? Is your final question? And my answer was yes. No. I mean, yeah, but... You're just twisting things around and you're not really answering anything. I'm sensing that this interview is over. I'm sensing that I'm going to leave in a moment. Of course you can sense it. You're doing it. I'm sensing that I won't be back on this show. We've got that right. Cat, I'm out of hairspray. I... I thought you said we had a- I'm out of hairspray. I thought you said we had a full supply. How's that? What do you mean you don't know? It's either perfect or it's not. We're not a hairspray. Amateur. Okay, forget it. What? We're on again. You are really bad at this, you know that? Okay, well, I have one more guest for you. Please welcome Pierre, the Philosopher Cat. It's great to have you here, Pierre. Am I really here? Are any of us really here? Or is this all an illusion? We? I don't know. We aimlessly roll through this life, like so many balls of string, unraveling as we go. What do we know? What can we know? That's an interesting perspective. Tell us, have you always had such an inquisitive mind? I simply have seen mind. Its levels of inquisitiveness is relative to those around it. But to answer your query, the mysteries of this universe have always fascinated and tormented me. Who am I? Why do I exist? What is love? Why won't you give me another treat? Do I not deserve another treat? I want another treat. And so on. Now, your grainy black videos of you lounging around your home, pondering the cosmos, have developed a cult following. Can you tell us how this fame has affected you? Fame is but the mirror to a self in perfection. I don't know what that means. It means I am who I am. No matter who knows me, the question is, who I um, I really don't know what you're saying. Let's just move on. What's your favorite movie? I do not understand favorite. There are those films which are embedded in my soul and those which I have no recollection of ever viewing. Your question is meaningless. Right. Well, what's your favorite? Interrupting cat! Woo, woo, woo! How does this keep happening? How does anything keep happening? Just stop it. <laughs> cat, don't let him come out. I've had just about enough of you. I'm sorry, just let me go. M Mr. Wiggles, is that you? Yes, it, it's me. What are you doing? I'm trying to reinvent myself. But you're Mr. Wiggles. You're a legend. You pr 
practically invented internet cat starting. I was a legend. Now I'm just a washed up nine year old cat without an act. Back in the old days, all you had to do was be cute, be funny, and be a cat on the internet. I was adorable. I was funny. The camera loved me. The internet loved me. Then these younger cats came along, each of them with their own special act, and everyone forgot about poor Mr. Wriggles. So now you put on a mask and interrupt things? Yes. People have a short attention span. I jump in front of them, I yell, I do a little dance, I photobomb, I hack into shows. I do what I have to do in order to survive. It ain't art, but it's work. You know, I'll tell you something. If it's one thing this world needs, is a cat brave enough to jump out, do a little dance, and interrupt our crazy lives. Thank you, you brave, beautiful creature. You mean it? What does it mean to mean something? Give it a rest, Pierre. Rest. Ugh. If only I could. Well... That's about all the time we have this evening. And as always, by drawing the blinds on the worldwide window. As I was saying, by drawing the blinds on the worldwide window, we expose... Professor Fluffenstein, quiet down! Sorry, folks. My dog. He is a real sweetheart, but when it's feeding time, it's feeding time. I am doing my show! My hair! You're messing up my hair! Ow! <sighs> this is Ian McCordley, wishing you a perfectly pleasant evening. Look! Interrupting cat! Woo -woo 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 -woo. Yeah! I don't know. The mysteries of this. I'm sorry, I messed up. Cool. I hear you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> well now, Boo Boo, you've toured the world with the likes of Lady Gaga, Rihanna, and Barbara Strassand. 